I didn't see Gerald. Okay, Madam Chair, whenever you are ready. Okay. Is everybody ready? Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. I would like to call our meeting to order. It's 6.01 on January 6, 2022. Happy New Year, everybody. This is the Town of Loomis Land Use Committee meeting. Um, we are here in the depot, uh, Mary Beth and I, and we have a member of public here um, and we have members on zoom and our agenda um, has the information on how to participate in this meeting um, let's go ahead and do a pledge of allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you Carol, can we have roll call please yes uh chairperson jan clark Kretz. here tim monderko aj moyer gene wilson gene is here uh beth sure. cohen here. Vice Chair Bonnie London. Here. Randy Elder. Here. Auxiliary Member Ramona Brockman. Here. And Auxiliary Member Greg Obranovich. Okay. Thank you. Now the time for committee comments items not on the agenda. Anybody have anything they'd like to discuss not on the agenda? Either here or Public. Right, sure you're seeing none. Um, now the time to adopt our agenda. For this evening, do I have a motion? I move to adopt the agenda. Or yeah, the agenda, sorry. And a second. Do we have a second? I'll second. I, okay, Beth seconded. Great, thanks, Beth. And roll call, please. Oh, okay. Uh, roll call vote on this. Uh, Jan Clark Kretz? Yes. Bonnie London? Yes. Jean Wilson? Beth Cohen? Yes. Randy Elder? Here. Um, now we are going to open it up for comment on our consent agenda. Anybody have anything they'd like to comment on our consent agenda this evening? All right, now we'll need another motion to approve tonight's consent agenda, please. I move to approve the consent agenda. I move. Can you do a roll call for us, please? Yeah, who was, did, did Randy do the uh, second? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I can hardly hear you guys that are over there at the, at the, um, Pick up. at the depot, correct. Okay, okay so roll call. Um, Jan Clark Kretz? Yes. Bonnie London? Yes. Jean Wilson? Beth Cohen? Yes. Randy Elder? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. We'll roll right over to committee matters and pass it over to Mary Beth. Yes. Good evening, and thank you all for being here. Welcome to 2022. Um, we can get this party started. I'll turn it over to Christy um, 
you know, status schedule, Mark, I, I don't know which one of you are taking that one, but uh, Christy, take it away. <laughs> okay, sure. We can talk about the status. So we have today's meeting. We'll be going over the glossary terms that we've updated and then the uh, land use element. And uh, if any of those don't com aren't completed tonight, we'll carry those over to the 20th. Um, but the main purpose of the 20th is to look at all of those land use change requests. And if that doesn't, uh, it's not completed, then we'll we'll carry this over into February. But let's hope we can uh, make some great progress tonight. So I'm going to share the glossary. We can jump in with that. Can you see that? Yes. A little bigger. Okay, hang on just a minute. Okay. How's that? Good? Yeah, there you go. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so um, instead of going line by line, I would like to just go through alphabet letter by alphabet letter with um, if anyone has a comment on, say, any words beginning with A or phrases beginning with A, shout it out, raise your hand, and we'll look at those specifically um, instead of going word by word. It, as you know, it's long, so um, we can get through it a little faster. Were there any comments on the abbreviations? No. Okay. And skipping down, sorry, there are... I have oh. one general question about the glossary and these abbreviations. Have we already confirmed that these actually all get used? Yes. And taken? Okay. Perfect. Yeah, and we've looked through all of the elements to see... Um, make sure they're all uh, showing up here. So we're not leaving Perfect. anything out. Okay, so A, um, I do wanna talk about one little thing. Um, as you'll see on the word abut, there are words in these brackets saying zoning code. Each of these words, once we have completed the general plan elements, um, I will go through and make sure uh, to reference where we use these words. So if it's in the zoning code, if it's in the general plan, where it happens to be, or both. So um, that'll come after each word or phrase. Looks like Jean has a comment. You can unmute Jean. Jean, go ahead and unmute. You can. Might be having some technical difficulties there. Okay. If it's easier for you, Jean, type in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I have a question. We're used to normally here we refer to things as a zoning ordinance, although consultants fairly often use the term zoning code. And uh, is there a reason that we need to change that from zoning ordinance to code or can we leave it as ordinance? Um, we could do ordinance, that's fine. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Then you, then you might want to at some point do a find and replace sort of. Yeah, it's. I've only done this for the word of but. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So we'll get and, to that at the end. And, and um, while I while I have you, um, it's not in these early things, but I noticed later on, like when you get to manufacturing and some things later, that it, even the cleaned up version has a whole lot of struck out stuff. Yes. And when we get there, you can explain to us about that. Yeah, okay. those were the, the last changes that we went over. So I just wanted to show you all of those changes so that you could all see that we had made the changes that we had discussed. Okay, that's all. So it, it, those are the changes since the last version was posted to the website. Okay, so any A words? Oh. Okay, I will, sorry, this is probably making you all very dizzy. 
uh, B. Uh, C. D. E. You're all very quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> look away, look away. Just listen to my voice. <laughs> um, uh, any Perhaps page down instead of scroll? Oh, it's it's a little hard on my screen. I don't have okay, right? So I got unfortunately. You. Okay, um, I want to stop you. Okay, any F's? G. H. I. Um, I do have a note on important scenic resources. So if we're going to use this, I think we should define some of those areas. I think that's something we need to do or make that a implementation measure to define those within the town. I would suggest that that becomes a recommendation for implementation um, rather than doing it in the definitions here. Oh, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> and, yeah. and I think that would go under the development guidelines Mm hmm. Yeah, I see what I see coming out of that would be a map of some kind or something right. of that effect. Okay. Um, and then I just moved industrial heavy. So that's not anything different. And then J. It's short. <laughs> any, any K's? Or L? Um, here, I did put in something for Learning Center. Um, we, if you have any comment on that, speak up and we can discuss it. Uh, any M's? So here's where you'll start to see a lot of the changes that were made from the last few meetings um, that you wouldn't have seen on the website before. And I know we had talked about, you know, losing this, but that is all codified in the in section 1380.20 of the municipal code. So it's not it's not going anywhere. Well, it's good that you've got that in there to point them in the right direction. That's our biggest concern. So same with, you'll see that over and over again, the manufacturing processing light, just making this shorter here and referencing back to that section of code. Okay, N. Oh, 
Uh, and then office, same, same thing. Just uh, shortening that up a bit. Uh, the definition for office park. Uh, this was business park and we, we changed that and then it's relocated down to O's since it's not business anymore. Uh, changes to open fencing, open space and open space element. Shortening ordinance. Uh, definitions for park, removing park strip. That was not used anywhere, so we can delete that. Um, passive park, uh, shortening pedestrian orientation. Um, adding public facilities to public and quasi-public. And then Q was just the qualifying resident, adding lower income housing. And then we're on to R. And then again, same with recycling facility, referencing that section of code. And then uh, simplifying residential accessory use or structure. Rural, anyone wanna discuss rural? <laughs> or rural character? Those had some discussion last time. If we're good with that, we can keep going. And we're on to S. So this was another one where we had quite a bit of discussion. So um, I added the reference to learning centers and that definition above, and then also referenced um, the definition of school that's codified in the municipal code. So that means a school zone can now be used for like a um, learning center. Is that? Um, what do you mean by school zone? Well, uh, like a, so that we have land use for schools, correct? Or mm -hmm. are they all built out already. So if there's a land use parcel that's zoned for schools, has that always been used for learning centers also, or was that public? school um, and these charters, charter schools? Um, so we have these separate definitions for those. So the learning centers would be smaller scale facilities, um, more like uh, tutoring centers and things of that nature. Yeah, I thought those go into like a commercial land use. Yes, yeah, and that's why it's differentiated. Oh, because now it's defined under school. So now it's it is a school. Well, it just says see also definition. We're not defining a learning center to be a school. We're just, people might, when they're looking into learning centers, be looking at the school definition. So we're just putting in this cross-reference to have them go see the definition of what, what qualifies as a learning center. Right. So Beth, for me, it actually kind of takes learning centers, um, it separates it from school it actually distinguishes it as being different from a school is how I read it. Okay, that, I read it differently, but I mean, the lawyer just said that it's defined separately. When I read school, and this is under the definition page, I look at school, it says a school is a public or private institution, see also learning center. That to me means a learning center is now a school, but. I am not a lawyer. I think it also says does not include childcare facilities. Maybe it should also say does not include childcare facilities and studios such as, 
in the smaller studios. Okay. Um, here, we could do this perhaps, whoops, a little too far. Um, uh, let's see. How about that? Okay. Now it says it's not. <laughs> Okay, uh, semi-rural is also another one of those we discussed. Excuse me, Randy, you had your hand raised? Um, I did, back on schools. I thought it was best to leave the, see also the definition of studios, art, dance, et cetera, because that is specifying they are separate from the school. And this is very clear. So the way we've got it now is we specify that schools don't include those various concepts and by bolding them, that's how we're signifying that they are separately defined terms within the glossary here. Yes. Yeah, either way will work for me, but I think it was clear by having to see also the definition, that standard language you see when trying to make the point that this is- Christy, how about we add another sentence now that says, we, we leave the one that you've already added that says does not include these terms and then we add another sentence that says for definitions of these terms see see definitions above sure okay How's that? The definitions are not above. Well, studio isn't, yeah, <laughs> in this glossary. How about we start out that sentence that says, see also definitions of right. I think it was in this fine. glossary. Okay, so maybe I am putting here studios and learning centers. And then we can just leave this as it is. Yeah, I think you do, do want to include all of these terms though. Yeah. Rather than just studios or learning centers, otherwise we get into a situation where it seems unclear which, which of those following terms that are listed there are and are not part of the school's definition. Okay. How is that? Okay. okay. Moving along. Semi rural, any comment? And then eliminating sign area and sign height. So site coverage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we added impervious surfaces to the definition. Yes. Uh, and I thought we were going to discuss that um, when we talk about, um, you know, that land use. Um, the table. Yeah, there's a table that says a percentage of the site can be covered. Mm -hmm. And our old, our old version was just structures, I think, basically like a building or a garage um, and does not include like people's sidewalks and driveways and other impervious areas. So I think that makes a huge impact on the table. Mm -hmm. um, I would like this personally to be highlighted and not, um, you know, approved until we look at that table. Sure, you can do that. Jean, go ahead and unmute. Um, I, I've been thinking about this and yes, we have a concern for, for how much impervious surface we're covering, which has an effect on runoff and that kind of thing. On the other hand, right now, by making it the buildings, the structures, um, we're telling people how much of your lot you can have structures, buildings on. And if we lump them all together, and it goes from, let's say, 25% to, we say, 40% or something. It, it almost makes it sound like, hey, you can have 40% of your lot covered by buildings. That's right. Or 60 or 80, and that may not be what we want to do. In effect, I think what we're looking at two different requirements here. Oh, um, in addition to this, we also still have floor area ratios that apply. Mm-hmm. But those don't typically apply to to anything but the commercial kind of thing, do they? At least I haven't seen them applied that way. That would be commercial, but then you also have to remember you have setbacks and and things like that too. Well, well do we do same. we really want to tell people they can have a, a large amount of of structure on their property, which is what we're going to see, even though we do have also concern for runoff and the impervious amount that's covered. So I'm con I'm concerned that mixing these two together may get us some undesirable results in the in the amount of building coverage that we end up with. I agree. Because they could put a lot of building on there and not very much sidewalk or or um, driveway or something and then we have something that looks out of place yep that's exactly my concern <laughs> i guess Randy? the opposite of that would be though you could by not including that you're you could allow uh, a site to be paved over um a large expanse of that to be paved over and so the that's precisely the issue that we've run into by not having this defined this way the previous, I, also table, like the previous table had something like 40 percent i i don't remember i have to open it up and then now it was changed to almost double so i share gene's concern where i believe it's going to turn into some neighboring communities where you have a very large house on a smaller lot and it will not look like what we want our town to be you know it's essentially, if we have basically two different things we're getting at, maybe we need two different um, requirements, one for structures and one for impervious surfaces and different, uh, different amounts for those. But I Randy, am- go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Randy. Okay, sorry. Um, That's okay. Mark, what do you see? What, what's your opinion on all of this? Mark? Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Randy. From, from my perspective, um, I think we can define in the table um, of the land use element what we mean by coverage. Uh, I share the concern that in addition to buildings, you would have pavement. 
Um, I also know that, you know, uh, what is it, the gene used, starter castles, uh, which I think is hilarious, uh, is, is also an issue. So I think we can actually put more narrative in the land use table to explain what we mean there um, and leave it be. Uh, I like the impervious surface here, but we'll have to use the definition differently. Uh, definitions are not regulations, so we can modify how we perceive and what we regulate in the regulatory pieces of the document. Should, it, should we then say reference the table here? I, it's it's kind of unnecessary because the the general plan holds sway over all of this. <laughs> but okay, but the land use element is part of the general plan, right? And right now, the land use element has max site coverage. Yeah, what it says is max lot coverage, but you're absolutely right. Um, and you know, right now, those percentages are. Um, you know, 20 to 60 percent, depending on what the designation is. And some of the recommendations were to increase that. But the intent there was to increase it for building, not necessarily for pavement. Um, and, you know, we could talk that through when we talk about the land use. But I think it's fine if we had two different, diff different definitions um, in here, one for site coverage building and one for site coverage total or something along those lines. Getting back to Andreas's concern, uh, what we don't want is somebody to just pave the front yard and pave everything because it's no maintenance. Uh, I think that's as ugly as a big building on a small lot, but that's my perspective. I think to address the concerns that Gene and Beth raised, we should add a definition that speaks more directly to structure coverage or building coverage. So basically what you're saying, Mark, is add a separate definition, but I think site coverage at least in other jurisdictions, what I've seen is that typically includes all of the impervious things, structures, accessory structures, driveways, all of the basically paved stuff that doesn't absorb water when it rains. Exactly, that works. Okay, and we need to update that in the chapter three, the land use element. I'm looking at table three one and it says max site coverage. So, okay. so, yeah, then we can change the term there as well in that section. So it should be max site coverage? Is that well, I think site coverage covers it. I think. Um, well, Beth, is that what you're indicating? Beth? I can't really hear her if you're talking to me. Sorry, um, were you indicating like it to say max site coverage? Oh, this is what it says. It says that right now in table three one, maximum site coverage. And then it goes through the, all the land use categories <clears throat> and defines how much um, we're allowing in each land use to be to be covered. So if, we, if we're trying to say the maximum site coverage structure or maximum site coverage total, we need to be consistent of which term we're referencing now. So I've added site coverage structures and then site coverage total. Would you prefer maximum? Well, maximum gets into a regulation. I, yeah, I, yeah. I think total describes the concept and then with modifying or describing the total site coverage, the maximum total site coverage, that's, that gets into regulatory mm -hmm. stuff that shouldn't be in here. Okay. All right, so are we okay with what's been highlighted here? So do we do we find uh, do we define structure somewhere else? Because we used to have like it it's used to say more um, what we considered structures. I don't. Uh, let's see. Let's look down. Like carport. It used to say carports, garage, yeah, covers sheds, blah blah blah. Um, structure, anything constructed or erected, the use of which requires attachment to the ground or attachment to something located on the ground. Okay. Okay, so going back up, all good there? Okay. 
small town character. Any comments on that one? Not hearing anybody. And then we have a definition for specialized education and training. And we've added public and private streets. And a simplified street tree plan. And then uh, referenced um, the municipal code for studio. Simplified tourism, added townhouse. That is in there. Uh, a little addition for Dialeride. And then we had the heritage tree <laughs> discussion. Um, so I looked through some of the town's documents and the a heritage tree is identified, any tree identified by council resolution. Um, so here you can see where these are in the municipal code. Um, and then the term landmark tree is not used anywhere. So that should probably be struck. And then I think the more commonly used term, especially in terms of mitigation, are is protected trees. So that's where we have trees of a certain size or species, and those are covered by the tree conservation ordinance. Okay, on to you. Any comments on use or V? Or W? Down to Y? And Z. Anything? If not, we are done. <laughs> so we do have lists of agencies. These are just defining what those agencies are that um, we reference in the general plan elements. Um, if you have comments on those, we can look at them, but I am not hearing anybody or I haven't seen any comments submitted to that effect. So last chance, any changes on the, on the glossary until we move, we'll, we'll come back once we talk about the land use and the coverage for that site um, uh, coverage issue. But um, anything else, Jean, it looks like you have a, a comment. It probably doesn't matter, but is there a difference between a townhouse and a triplex? Um, I haven't seen triplex used so much in the general plan element, uh, the housing element. I, I just wondered because I'm, I guess I'm used to thinking of townhouses as being vertical rather, rather than having apartments above. And it probably does not matter particularly. Yeah, so this is saying three or more attached dwellings where no unit is located over, so on top of another unit. Um, I don't think a, a townhouse I usually see as something attached side to side. Right. Wall to wall. But it, something that was single story could, in this definition is also a townhouse thing. If we had that, like a duplex. But if, if there were three that are attached, then it's a townhouse, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's not so it's differenti that. differentiating between uh, a duplex and uh, a larger <coughs> series of units. Okay. 
Okay. Then I will stop sharing and Mark can take it away. Outstanding. That was riveting. <laughs> Are you all awake still? <laughs> uh, that's, that's awesome. Okay. Um, and now on to something completely different. So what we did was we took the recommendations from the various committees and things that this committee had worked on. And hopefully you're all seeing the land use element in its current draft form. If you could make it a little bit bigger for these old eyes, I'd appreciate it. Uh, oh, is that Randy? How's that Andy? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Is that better? Yes, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, <clears throat> and so the document's about 14 pages long, and I'm just going to quickly scroll through just to show you what's here. Uh, community design and character. Don't worry about figure numbers and whatnot. We'll fix that at the end. Uh, here are the goals, objectives, and policies. And then down in ladies' designations, we'll have text in here that came from the various subcommittees. And then here's the table that we were just talking about <clears throat> with some percentages in it that basically come right out of what we already have. Uh, we'll have a more in-depth conversation when we get there. And then the in-depth goals and policies or policies and implementation pieces at the very end, uh, also with highlights for the various committees um, to go in here. So this was all uh, sent out to you. And um, it's really entirely up to the committee how you'd like to, to wordsmith or go through this. But um, so we can, we can just get started and kind of go with there's the introduction and take it from there. And why, why don't you just go page by page and when there's uh, edits, we'll deal with those. Sounds like a plan. Um, this gets to the town's agricultural roots. Uh, talks about the concepts for the land use plan that we have with the map and so forth. Uh, talks about density intensity increasing toward the center of town and moving away from town. Uh, it gets much more uh, open, if you will. Uh, and the buildings are, are typically three stories or less. We don't have any high rises in, in town and don't plan on any, uh, that type of thing. Uh, land use pattern uh, talks about the uses in the various other uh, areas of downtown. Uh, it defines downtown and where it is. Uh, it also talks about integrating design and pathways into the design of the projects. It's not just land use. We need to look at other things as well uh, and that land uses connect to each other. Uh, community design and character. No, I'm sorry. I have a question. Sorry. Um, uh, item... C, I think it was up above. Sure. Oh, D, item D. It says buildings are generally three stories or less in height. Is that generally true? I thought we were generally two stories or less. I'm open to whatever you want to do there. I think she's correct. I don't know of any three stories right now. Do you want to keep it at two? Yes. Ramona? Uh, yeah, I think the observation is correct. Yeah, it's mostly two stories or less. I don't really know of any three-story buildings right offhand that are prominent in town, if any. Um, uh, I mean, I know our code or whatever will uh, it will allow for three stories, which I think is appropriate. It's fine. I don't have an issue with things going three stories. Um, so I guess it's just a matter of, you know, do you want to um, kind of bring forth the thought that things can go three stories rather than subvert it and leave people thinking that we're only going to have a town full of two story or one story buildings? Because I also take a little issue with the very first part of the introduction where it says uh, roots are in evidence everywhere with the legacy of residential large lots with ranch homes, farms, and livestock. Um, a lot of the, as far as I know, historic homes in the town of Loomis are um, two-story, which was very typical to build even a two-story farmhouse 
if you had the means to build a two-story haunted farmhouse, they exist quite a bit. And that's a kind of a prominent uh, farm look is to have a two-story farmhouse. So, um, you know, it just paints a picture of everything being large lot and ranch. Um, but your most historic part of your town right in the downtown area doesn't fit that characteristic. And then once you, you know, go a little further out to the large lots of like the H. Clark Powers area, well, those aren't part of agricultural or railroad legacy whatsoever. So um, I think it just paints a picture that's a little bit different than what it really is. Pomona, how would you describe it? How would you describe this first? What would you say? Um, <laughs> I don't mind the legacy of uh, agricultural and railroad roots, um, but um, yeah, it is a great question. How would you care? How would you kind of change it? Um, we could just do this. You know, with maybe legacy with. Um, yeah, it's just, I guess maybe with the downtown, um, just, you know, like a turn of the century or, or downtown, um, or small downtown commercial area. Um, it maybe just kind of phrase it more in that sense of, you know, placing it in its its time period, maybe if, it, if that helps out placing it in its time period that the, it's a small, town with a historic commercial core with typical, you know, um, residences, two, one and two story residences, um, and then going farther outwards to the uh, farms and farm homes. Um, because, you know, that's the way I see it is, yes, there is the other parts that are in there, Legacy Lane and, and all the other development that's happened, you know, but if you're trying to describe its legacy, I, I would, you know, there's not much to focus on. There's the small downtown and then there's, you know, Magnolia Street and those other small streets right nearby. Um, but maybe, it, maybe describing them as their, you know, as their historic character. Um, is this sentence even needed, Ramona? Can we just I don't that? know. Maybe it's not even needed. <laughs> um, yeah. If we have to write a paragraph to redefine it, I don't know that it... it yeah, it, no, that's true. Towns and agriculture roots are evidence everywhere. Um, and maybe just leave it at that, where the, it's railroad, agricultural and rail roots are evidenced. Um, and then the town represents an earlier time when going into town meant leaving the farm for school or commerce. Development has occurred over the years. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't need to actually add those, you know, the yeah. description in there. Um, and just this reference. Was, this was really add. just to set the tone. Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. That's all. So there's. there's yeah. So as I said, to me, it just the way it paints the picture to me doesn't really quite grasp what to me the small town character of Loomis is because it focuses a lot on the ranch homes and the farms but it detracts from the actual historic downtown part of it because it almost makes it sound like it's a collection of of ranches and ranch homes without a small commercial core um, it, the commercial core is referenced later saying that people went to the commercial center but um that's all to me it's just the picture it painted is it is not quite what i was um it's not what i would envision if i didn't know limis how's that <laughs> fair enough does, does that work so that's just my opinion so i don't know what everybody else thinks but mark that it says evidence, evidence everywhere with a legacy it, it you know oh, yeah. Uh, uh, let me just get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. So the second large paragraph, the one that's at the bottom of your screen right now, at the end, of, the end of that paragraph says, this does not mean that change will not occur, but for the most of the town, the change will be incremental rather than transformative. Um, I'm not a fan of this 
sentence. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't like the sentence. Can you guys hear us now? Yes. That's better, yeah. Mary Beth. Can you hear us? Yeah, that's better. You still have to speak up, but that's better. Okay. So, Mark, this is Jan. I have a question. I'm looking at the original general plan description of the introduction of land use, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's been changed. Is this introduction something that was created recently? And can you give us a background on that? Andy? This is what I expected. Your turn. Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to have to think back here, but uh, the, the previous introduction went into a lot of discussion. Well, the introduction we had had a lot of discussion about um, how the committees were formed and what we talked about, and that's not appropriate for the general plan introduction. Uh, so, you know, I, it's been a while since I looked at this and I have to go back and look at the introduction to the original general plan, but the intent was to uh, shorten the introduction up and simplify it uh, as we move forward. So there is a Franken document that was submitted, but it is pretty difficult to follow. As you can see, it is full of track changes. And so we debated back and forth quite a bit as to what to leave in and what to leave out. So I, mean, I guess the direct answer to your question is yes, this is text that was taken from or modified from the original general plan. But there is a track, there's a track change. I think it would be good for us to see what is, you know, what, what has been changed and what has been added so that we know. Well, what you know, you you had the you had the Franken document before, so this time we wanted to clean this document up because it was so difficult to follow. So you've had that, and you've reviewed that, and okay. this is the cleaned up version of what you have reviewed in the past. Okay. But if you want, Mark can throw up the Franken document again, and you can take a look at the changes that you recommended. But um, we have been through this entire document. Other than we're going to go through that land use chart again. So all of this, the committee has seen before. Correct. There's nothing here that's new. I didn't add anything or, or subtract. Um, so from, from my perspective, we, we cleaned this up. And, and the reason I picked on Andy right there is, um, is that as part of the discussion, I said the committee has been pretty clear. They wanted to see how the changes made. But I agree with Andy and Christy on this one in that Going through this as a committee might be a lot more complicated, so we cleaned it up. But both of well, those and and as a committee, we did go through this in the Franken document and looked at the underline and strikeouts, whatever. So it was now time. One of the things, Jan, that we did not do with the land use element, but we did with the other elements. Is every time we made revisions, we accepted the revisions and showed you the new ones. And so we step through the process piece by piece. And I think in some cases we have five versions of a document. This is the second version of this document because you had that Franken document for so long. And so that is a little bit different approach that this was put together, but you have seen everything. Okay, yeah, I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page and we know that we're looking at, um, you know, something. <laughs> Because it can be confusing. So um, I appreciate that going back and looking at everything. Um, yeah. Bless you, Jean. Oh, sorry. I should be muted. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I, I had a comment going back to the three stories until the apartments, um, until apartments. I think we were limited to two stories because when we built our house, we were not allowed to have three stories. We, we wanted to have an attic and that was not going to be allowed. Um, 
but with the apartments that probably is going to change and since this is generally maybe we don't need to bring that in here but that is likely to be uh, a place that the three stories are going to be have to be allowed i i expect um the other point is on on beth's the lined out um change um it will be um what anyway it's i think that is what we always want as our druthers we would like the changes to be in, in incremental rather than transformative but what is likely to happen with would have happened with the village and is likely to happen with um the the replacement is that it probably is going to be more transformative than we would like um I don't know if we need to, to put anything else in here. It sort of, do we need anything to, to go beyond core concept or just leave it at that? I, I think you're fine with ending it core, core concept because the general plan law, the state law does talk about, you know, that changes may occur and, and the general plan would change if that is necessary. So I don't know if you need to say, hey, uh, we're hoping this doesn't happen because every time you update the general plan, you know, that's possible. And given that you've gone 20 years with this general plan and what I think the town has done so far with this general plan update, you really haven't changed anything. You've clarified things that you really haven't changed anything. Are they okay with taking that out? It's like we're not answering hand up. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine taking it out because uh, actually it's kind of referenced up above in the very last sentence of the first paragraph or second to last sentence that while accommodating, uh, keep, the, keep Loomis rural while accommodating reasonable change. So it's kind of the same sentiment is that, you know, the, the changes, the intent is that the change is not going to be earth shattering when something is developed and changed. So it's, it's kind of a repetitive concept I think so I don't necessarily know it has to be at the last on line 21 I don't think that through 22 I don't think that has to be there the other changes on this part Here are the goals. What does goal three mean to attract new land uses that provides jobs to the town residents? That was in your current general plan, I believe. Let's see if that is. This, um... this is on your current general plan. So um, it means what the committee thinks it means or it can come out, it doesn't need to stay. I don't even know what that would, <laughs> I really don't know what that would mean. I, I understand to attract new development that provides jobs to the town residents and provide the law, but, and land uses is strange. I don't understand how you can attract new land uses unless we're saying this general plan, our vision for the next 20 years, we want to change. It, it's a weird goal. <laughs> so in my opinion, I think we should remove and land uses from goal three. Could it also maybe be and incorporate land uses that provide jobs? And what I mean by that is, let's say um, we had something that, and I'm just throwing this out there, I don't have any specific examples, but um, 
if we went from maybe something that was residential to commercial to try to create jobs so that again, people who live here could also work here and not have to commute in or align land uses that provides jobs? I do. On the new land uses, um, we talk about that. The Blue Goose is a perfect example, taking an old food packing shed and converting it into an event center, a produce stand, and a tap house. Um, so that is a not the original use of the property in the food packing shed, but now it's a use within the town it benefits the town residents. I think you could look at new land uses as being that sort of thing. If it pleased the committee, you could also just say attract, attract development that provides jobs, and that kind of covers everything. Okay. Right. Does that fit better? Yeah, no, I'm fine with the I'm fine with the changes. Yeah, I think it it's the land use um, reference was a bit um, confusing. The same way, just uh, I don't think we're really trying to attract new land uses because we already have land uses outlined. There are commercial areas, there are residential areas. So those aren't new land uses. It, it might change on where those uses occur, but um, to say that they're new, I, I wouldn't think would be useful to call that out. And not to belabor the point, but a land use can also be a type of use on the land that we haven't thought about yet that might be appropriate. But honestly, development covers it. Can we put an S on provide? Any other thoughts on these? Nope. Okay. Now these may need some wordsmithing because they came from the Franken document and uh, while the committee's seen them, they've probably not seen them without a bunch of track changes and colored text. So, um, so this is worth taking a little time to edit if we need to. And so for the, um, the very first objective, is it appropriate to maybe get a little more specific with um, to preserve the small town character through architectural and landscape design? Sure, that's why. Andy, what would you do with town entrances? That seems dull as dirt. <laughs> it, it does. Um, actually, they're gateways, not entrances. I would. Um, so you would say unique or uh, identified or enhanced town gateways? Mm -hmm. Maybe unique. Town gateways. Yeah. Because we had the discussion in some of the committees that the, the gateways may be a little bit different you know, depending on where they're located. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Does that does that fit with the committee? Can I ask a question? Um, our new land use element, this section that we're looking at, has five goals. I know we already passed the goals, but <laughs> I'm not past it. It has five goals. Uh, and three of the goals are to encourage de development, to encourage development. Our old 
uh, 2000 version of the general plan had nine goals. Yeah, but we have basically designed the whole, the first section is all designed. The second is more land use. So you have to look at both sets of goals, uh, Beth. So can you- And then some of that has been moved to the economic development. Element. So previously, our goal was to preserve, maintain, and enhance creeks and riparian areas for both aesthetic and wildlife habitats. Mm -hmm. That was goal one. Goal two was to protect groundwater and surface water quality. Yeah, they're here. They're right here. And mm -hmm. as, as was the stuff with the community before, some of these are moved to different elements of the general plan. But still, the just to be clear, the land use element, it has two sets of goals. It has goals really focused on design and then goals focused on the land use. So Beth, the second part here is the land use that Mark was showing. Okay, I, I downloaded what was on, maybe, maybe I just have something different, but I, I downloaded our agenda um, packet yeah, so these goals, those are the five goals that I, I see. Now, what, what goal did you just so something Mark, up? Mark, scroll down until you come to the land use goals. Oh, hold it, I didn't see them there. Oh, there they are, yep, okay. Okay, so what's the difference? In these two sections, I, I guess I missed. Um... Again, the first section is more design and character, and the second section is the land use. Uh, why did we split them up and move them? It's just weird. I, I don't. Okay, go back to whatever you're on. I don't understand why we'd break them up. To be fair, it does state um, it does state that where did I go? I mean, he. I mean, it, it does state that the first is community design character, and the other is the land use designations. Right. So we don't think that the preservation and maintenance of uh, creeks and wildlife habitat is part of our community and character. We were, I'm just saying it's heavy. On, we want to add more commercial properties and develop our town. There's three goals for that as a community character and only two goals for rural character. Do you see what I mean? So it almost seems like our goal is to no longer have this small town character and we want to develop. And so Christy and Mark, did you put those into the conservation of resources? Is that why? They aren't yeah, it, it, when we're talking about groundwater protection, oak woodland protection, that's really going to go under your conservation of resources. And so to eliminate any potential um, discord between that element and this element, then they're in that conservation of resources element. Is it appropriate to reference them, see conservation of resources or... Mm -hmm. The, the general plan is not just a land use element. The general plan is an entire cohesive document. The entire document applies to every project. Um, you know, that said, this is the committee's document. And we can certainly put goals back in here. Um, but the idea was to uh, eliminate repetition and the potential for conflict. Um, so we can wordsmith, we can put these back in. Uh, again, this was what the committee seen before and this is where things were, were moved. But, you know, I don't want to die on this hill either. So um, if we want to change it, let's change it.
I would like it to be added back in as a goal to try to maintain our natural resources. Um, and if, if we're worried about conflicting, then we can copy whatever the goal is from the conservation section over to here. But well, there'll be multiple goals um, because that really gets down into quite the detail on each of those topics. Um, the other, the other thing, rather than putting them as goals, we could mark if you go up a little bit higher, possibly in that introduction, right. is to discuss in there and reference the conservation element and talk about that one of the object, the goals of the town is to maintain this character, uh, and you know the goals and policies that do that are within the conservation element. Why can't we put the goals back in and just reference where they're more deeply spoken about in the other? Um, so the issue with putting goals in in multiple places is that that complicates every consistency analysis that we have to do with the general plan. And then it also runs the risk of creating inconsistencies if in the future we update one of the versions of the goal. and omit to making the same changes to the identical goal in a different different of the elements. So then perhaps we need to come up with uh, goals that talk about, um, you know, preserving and maintaining. Somehow we need to have our goal number one, because um, I can see best point. Um, it definitely is sort of encouraging development um, in, in that sense. Um, but looking at the old general plan, it's very clear where they, where they, the importance of the goals were. It, it just doesn't seem to be coming through with what is here. Okay, let's wordsmith this then. Um, do you want to see what's in the current general plan and then pick and choose from there and figure out how to wordsmith it or, or what do you want? I mean, what we, here we have preserve and maintain, enhance creeks and repair in the areas. We have policies and objectives in here that deal with this specifically, uh, but we can establish it as a goal, um, keeping in mind that this is the land use element. The intent of this element is to guide development and it can also provide conservation. If we want to say that there, no development shall occur in these areas, then we can say that in the goals. And, and uh, I, think, I think what it is, is we want to make sure that people understand that we want, we care deeply about our resources here in Loomis. And um, so wordsmith that um, and the fact that, you know, we, our areas are heavily wooded and um, that is also something very important to us. And um, I mean, that is really, you know, when I think about Loomis, I, that's what I think about. Um, so I do think we need to have something there that involves. Mark, maybe, maybe old goal number four could be returned. That seemed kind of to go with the character versus actual resource protection, but maintaining the natural resources to maintain that character of the town. And maybe, I don't know, change that up a little bit. Is that anywhere else, Christy? Did we use that in the conservation element? No, because that's something that's more related to a visual character. Okay. And uh, th so these are important to free rock outcroppings, meadows, grazing areas. I agree. But, you know, we have a lot of woodland areas too, which I think is equally as important. Fair enough. Let's see. So we have goal number three here. Randy, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I think it's pretty clear looking at the entire document that the town of Loomis is committed to 
maintaining our rural atmosphere and the character of the town, reflecting the heritage that goes back 170 years or so. Um, yeah. And I think it's very clear to somebody who's coming in to propose a project or who lives in town and wants to potentially develop a piece of property. It, they know very clearly by the whole of this document what the intent of the community is. They will not be confused. And yeah, that's an excellent point. The more that we, and, and the more that we mix up things in here, we're just overstating a case that's already been very well made. That would be my comment. So, Ms. what we're talking about, I think, is goal number one. We should be creating a goal number one to set that tone. Is it possible even just to add in goal number one by emphasizing rural character quality and preservation of natural resources along with livability in their design? Ramona? I was just gonna make another comment about the first goal because um, it says uh, rural character of Loomis and new residential developments. Um, do we wanna just restrict the idea of rural character to just residential? Um, I would I would take out residential and new. Just, and just say development, you know, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, this was taken directly out of your current general plan. This is how it reads now. Can you go back to the one we're editing, Mark, please? Yeah. So if you do that, we really don't need those two additional goals, but goal number one does in fact emphasize it. And the only other thing, Mark, is up in the introduction is possibly at the end of that paragraph reference the parks and open space element, the conservation element that have these policies that are going to uh, really drive the character of the town. Okay. So if we're trying to condense all the, what I feel is important to the character of the town, which is all the open space, um, if we're trying to condense that into one goal, why are we not trying to condense the uh, desire to get new development, to bring in new income streams um, and commercial, find adequate space for commercial industrial? Why isn't all those, are, are all those three goals condensed into one as well? Well, if that's what you want to do, these are again from your existing general plan. So if you feel that you want to condense them into one, let's think about how we do that. Well, the existing general plan has 12 goals, right? And, and uh, nine goals, sorry, nine goals. And so of those nine, it used to have five, six goals that were all talking about, we like our rural open space atmosphere. And then the last three were the development. And now we've condensed it, all those first six into one, you understand? And then well, but, 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 but the thing is, we I guess because you're only on the land use committee, you don't realize all the other work that the committees have done in the conservation, the parks and open space, significant goals and policies are in those documents. And again, this is focused on land use. So uh, again, we don't want a duplicate, but this this general plan in its comprehensive nature absolutely covers those desires. Yeah, so the first four goals really speak to the issue of preservation of things. The rest of them, the other five goals, all talk about development. So it's not half and half, but more to the point, I mean, we can certainly leave this in. Um, our marching orders were to make few changes as possible. So the changes that we've made are to move these to the other elements of the plan where they are appropriate. Um, but again, this isn't a hill that I want to die on. Uh, if, if, if they need to be in here and we want more here for numeric reasons, that's fine. Um, these are all goals out of your current general plan. And, and the other thing is, uh, as a planner, when we're doing consistency with the general plan, we don't look at 
the number of goals and saying this has more importance than something else because there's more of these goals. We really look at the text. And if the text says we're preserving the, the wetlands and the woodlands and the riparian, which we do in the conservation element, that's what we have to do. That, that's a strong statement. So we don't look at how many of these make up, makes it more important than another. They're, in a general plan, every goal has equal standing within the general plan. There is no difference. Okay, in my opinion, is if you're gonna consolidate all of the uh, preservation of natural resources, those six goals into one, then we should also consolidate all of the development into one goal. And then you just have two goals. So they're not just consolidated though, they've been moved to the conservation of resources element. So they, they all of those previous goals still exist in some form in another element. We're not just folding them into one. To Andrew's suggestion earlier, I do think it's important if we could reference it. Up at the introduction. We'll yeah. do that up here. And, you know, and honestly, the entire intro to the general plan does the same thing. When we do a consistency analysis, all of the goals, policies, and objectives of all of the elements are considered at the same time. There's no one that's above the other. But again, it's up to the committee. It's easier to have a goal that has a single point than it is to have one with multiple points for consistency. Randy, go ahead. Thank you. I think it's fine the way it is. Even with the addition of those other two, Randy? Sorry? They aren't pretty duplicated then? I can't hear you. Can you clarify what you're okay with? Because we are still deciding on LU at those two in blue. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I cannot understand what you're saying, but if you're talking to me, I think it's fine the way it is. Hey, Randy, this is Bonnie. What um, Jan, because I know it's hard to hear in the depot, what Jan was asking you is there are two, um, two goals that were added that um, reflect the preservation of resources, and those are LUX that are in the blue. And she, she wanted to know if you're okay with that because we really haven't figured that one out yet. I am, as long as our consultants are okay with it also. Okay, thank you. And I think they think it's a duplication. Uh, the question, Christy, I'll ask you, are those duplicated anywhere else in the general plan? I would say I that the second one is, it goes into quite a bit of detail in the conservation of resources, the one wow. about oak woodlands and native trees. Um, right. I did a brief, a quick little check of that element and I didn't see anything related to rock outcroppings or, or that those features that are a little more on the visual end than the resource, the biological resource end or, or geological resource end. Okay. So I so rock are outcroppings as far as we know aren't mentioned anywhere else. I know that was an issue that came up with Turtle Island and she was, the developer was proposing to keep the rock outcroppings and incorporate them into the landscaping rather than just, just um, blow them up and get rid of them. I think um, that might not be a bad thing to keep. It's, it's distinct from the whole conservation of Correct. Um, protected or regulated resources. So Chrissy, what you're saying is that second new one could be removed because we definitely have the protection of oak woodlands and native trees within the conservation element. Absolutely. But, but leave the, the first addition, which is to protect major landscape features within Loomis. Yeah, because we're looking at features and not the actual, we're, we're looking at how that affects the visual. Correct. 
I mean, I do think it is um, Bonnie's edition of preservation of natural resources that could cover it as well. Um, that's broad enough to include quite a bit of, of um, resource or visual resource. Um, but if I were to keep one, I would keep the the top one in blue, the and and not the second one. Um, can you guys hear me okay now you can we didn't for a while yeah <laughs> so i think when randy was talking about this is jan talking um talking about how we might um state the first one um he did talk about historical um you know some of our historical businesses and is there a way we can add that here or does that belong somewhere else yeah we talked so, about that in the conservation element too historic resources and ramona has her hand up okay yeah i uh i kind of agree with christy um i don't think we need to certainly not add the second uh goal in blue because that should be under the resources. Um, I don't mind adding the first one, but I don't think it's ne totally necessary. And then, you know, to make a point for the other goals, they are, I mean, they are related to development and seeming to be more encouraging of development, but they are very distinct. I mean, um, the, you know, the second one is where the uses are intense, whether it's down, you know, closer to downtown versus less intense farther out. Um, the other one is providing jobs, so that's a totally different objective. And then the other that designate the land, that's more of the, you know, residential versus um, commercial and industrial. It's the mix of how much land is dedicated to all those different uh, land uses. So that's like a land use mix issue or goal. And then um, the other is they are all related, but the other then is services to the town residents as well as um, outside, you know, tourists. So to me, even though those three are, or whatever, are all more or less related to um, commercial activity, um, I, I view them as very distinct goals. Um, so I, I don't have an issue like with that they are all kind of related to um, more or less development if you want to call it that but um, I don't find that that's a problem to have those distinct goals in there as separate goals instead of combining them all. Jan does this get at the history piece that you just talked about? Yeah thank you. How about historical instead of history? Yeah, I, I, I debated that. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is this is really minor, but um, on four, maybe taking new out, so just to accommodate commercial and industrial development. Mm -hmm. My comment would be, rather than historical, we put in to maintain the heritage. Heritage. Oh, wow. Yeah, that works. That's that's the word you use first. I just didn't remember it. <laughs> yeah, I would I would promote that because the first goal in the historic portion of the conservation of resources element is preserve the historic character of the town. <laughs> Mark, could you remove that second? I don't think we need the native trees in here because we do have the first one you modified the. I have natural resources and then you have the landscape features which are more of a land use um change Ooh, oh that that was not what i wanted to do all right I'll put it this way how's that and there you go because again these are dealing with land use that we have in the town and the character of the land use and it all of these deal with the character in the community rather than specifics and, and honestly, as a, as a town staff member having to review consistency and, and 
guiding people these give good direction on if anything is to happen, how it's to happen. How does the committee feel about that now? Are we still in need of more wordsmithing there? What do you think, Beth? Um, I'm, I'm fine with this, I suppose. I, I would like to say that we have not reviewed this. I know you guys are adamant that we have, but we stopped on page six, uh, the previous page six, which was the table. And so all these are well below that in, in the old general plan. So this is the first time that we've discussed it as a committee. Okay, should I move on from here? Yes. Okay, so the objectives here are um, also linked to the goals up here. And um, you'll see policies, and down below we'll have implementations. Talks about natural features shall be incorporated in design, buildings shall be pedestrian oriented. Um, we have gateways here, um, preserving rural culture at gateways, commercial centers through landscaping, a lower intensive uses. Those sorts of things. How about in objective one and unique gateways that reflect the town's heritage? Yes, I like that. And Mark, in looking at this, I, I feel like policy one sort of reflects that goal too. Uh, maybe we don't need to add that in there and just use Bonnie's addition of, of the natural resources. Or maybe policy two becomes correct. Something that implements that goal that will now be renumbered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do that, and then it makes it stand out. The, the converter box is working. Any other changes here? Um, on on uh, buildings shall be pedestrian oriented and street facing. Someplace I saw whatever I was reading today that there was someplace acknowledging that that is not always the case on the larger rural parcels. Um, and this is a I shall. Think, I think this really ought to be commercial buildings. Oh. I, I have a hard time with that being residential. Right. Okay. Because I agree with you. Mark, this might be a good area to add the implementation measure for important scenic resources. Um, do you have it you can send to me and I'll put it right in there right now? Put it in the chat and I'll take care of it. I just have the definition. I'll, I'll put something together for you. Okay. I'll make a note here. Oh, 
On line 28 and 29, um, the version I was looking at this afternoon still had that we would develop a right to farm ordinance, which we do now have. So it looks like Christy must have found that and taken it out. <laughs> Oh, actually, no. Implementation measure LU1211. Oh, at the bottom there. It, yeah. So yeah, I did not take anything out. <laughs> that, that needs to come out then. Yeah. So our old uh, land use policy said that new development shall bear the full financial burden on public services and capital improvements and impact fees. And um, that doesn't seem to be in there. And then new development shouldn't create undue demand on schools, roads, or adversely affect quality of life adjoining neighborhoods. That's no longer in there. Those are in the economic development and I think down here under land use, correct, Mark? Right here. Does that show up? Yep. So the one on, on uh, fiscal impact uh, goes into economic development element or economic resources or however that's titled. Um, and then the other one is right here. I'll leave that in case we need to reference that split. Are the rest of these acceptable? This, this one's curious to me, Andy. I mean, that's an existing goal. Um, yeah, I know. I just, it's unusual for a, a community okay, I know. to take that on, right? Even the counties don't want that. <laughs> right. But I mean, there's no harm, no foul. We had a discussion before on this, and I, I think it was decided just to leave it in there. It's, you know, like you say, no harm, no foul. Um, does everybody on the committee know what the Williamson Act is? Okay. I, I do. Basically, it gives people a tax break for, for their farming operation. You have to have it for 10 years at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, and the only one that we've had was the, the nursery that has since recently gone out of business. So, um, and the state sometimes has not funded it. So I don't even know what the current status of that is, but if they did refund it, refund, not refund, if they funded it again, then at least we have that provision, whether mm -hmm. anyone would want to use it, I don't know. But I don't know that it hurts to leave it in. Yeah, it's no harm, no foul. Prop 13 basically gutted it in the TPZ. <coughs> but no worries. Um, okay. Are we are we good there? Should I move on? Move on. So this is the text of the land use designation. And this may be where we want to talk about coverage since it's an issue and when we talk about density and intensity um, and we talk about the various designations and whatnot um, but we doesn't really talk about coverage and we probably should if we're going to differentiate between coverage of uh, structures and coverage of uh, everything you know like we did in the definitions <laughs> If you do that, I'd suggest a whole new paragraph just on coverage. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll probably do it here. Let's 
Ramona? Just a grammatical thing. Um, the first sentence, um, would you put, or this, yeah, in line five, would you put a period after others and start a new sentence with the land use diagram? To me, it, it grammatically seems funny, but that's probably Jean's forte more than mine. <laughs> Which line? Line five. Way up here? Yeah, like, land use diagram. Yeah, the very first sentence. It seems like a run-on sentence to me. I think it's line eight. Oh, oh line eight. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Line eight. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I think it should. I think it should have stopped there. Just back changes probably doesn't fit with it properly. Good catch. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have. The text there, and then we go into this was this is new text. Oops. So, are you going to bring back to us whatever the paragraph is going to be on coverage at some point? Yes. Okay. So this text here is based on the discussions we had with the various committees, right, Mark? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then based on the conversation that started this, you know, we may want to probably modify this. Um, we just say classic farm homes. Yeah. That's probably better. Yep. I think um, on line 32, where it says that um, residential uses more typically include apartments, um, not sure that that's accurate, just because I think we only have one apartment building mm -hmm. right now. Right. Yeah. I don't think that is necessary. No, I don't mm -hmm. think the thing can go away. Yeah. And Mark, since we took that sentence out, mm -hmm. the reference to these building types mm -hmm. doesn't make sense anymore. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> trying to think if we need the sentence at all. I mean, part of the sentence there is to talk about the pedestrian oriented character of the town center. Um, why don't we just say new buildings in the town center or in right. Yeah. I wouldn't say new buildings. I'd just say buildings in the town center because sure. you could redevelop. I mean, yeah. And actually, the town has done a good job of converting and, and cleaning up existing buildings. Yeah, that's what he put. He just typed downtown in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you need that many units with the exception of apartments. Yeah, I just, I want to just say mm -hmm. units in near the downtown backyard. That, that works. Okay, there you go. Line 34 at the end, remove of. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Save.
Okay, can we move on from here? Yeah, that's better. Is one of the goals to try to, I guess, create a, a visual of what, not only what we currently have, but we want to see. And what I, the reason I'm asking that is because um, talking to a lot of residents who were against the village, they had a huge problem with the, um, the alleyways and feeling like it was just taking everything down and putting concrete on it, that the greenery and then to, um, to Beth's point, the just the the natural preservation of trees, of our waterways, of our greenery, that that's that's a huge priority for people. And so, um, maybe trying to reflect something to that with a without, you know, being redundant, um, but just capturing that. You know, again, I mean the just the natural environment really is important to the residents that live here and and. and is important to the look that they want to have. And, and we did talk about that under the character above, and now we're getting into the actual land use piece of this, Bonnie, but if there's a place that we could add that as oh, part of the description. Probably in this paragraph here, Andy. Yeah. Be more specific here about. Well, I'll that... say this. Yeah, I, I just hate environmental resources. Right, right. That's a That's catch all garbage term. Natural resources would be better. Yeah, it would be, but um, I even go so far as to say natural resources such as trees, ah. streams, um, anything else. Um, so Jack, Jack Padden made made a comment, and I know that I'm not going to be able to um, articulate it, you know, as well, you know, but something to the effect of building within the natural environment as opposed to over the natural environment, you know, um, and the the one example I can think of is that that project of townhouses, um, Stone Bridge or Stone Gate, where mm -hmm. they, they really just built within the the boulders within the trees they didn't just cut it all down mm -hmm. and you have a is, is that the one at the north end of town uh, yeah. off of taylor yeah, yeah. I, I love i love that i thought that was a great little project i took a bunch yeah. of pictures of it yep ramona you had your hand up okay yeah no i mean now that bonnie's kind of talked a little bit more about it i see her point and with the natural resources but i mean the thing i do want to keep pointing out that is that um, you know, it's all based on uh, res preservation or re keeping natural resources in trees and streams, but you also have to keep in mind that in certain areas, such as the core downtown area or right adjacent to it, that um, even though people like to see it and have gotten used to seeing the open areas, that that's your down, that's your core area for infill so you know i just to kind of always belabor that you have to keep the trees in the stands of trees again it's a give and a take that you know some of it's gonna have to go away if that's where it makes sense to develop the intensity and the density like in the village area um you know, I know a lot of people were upset about it, but I mean, the reality is, is that nothing, it was, you know, other people had intended to build something there years ago because it's towards the center of town. But just because we have kind of open pasture area and kind of in the center of our town doesn't mean that it has to stay open pasture area. It's not quite the appropriate, you know, for the rest of our plan, the density intensity is supposed to go down in that area. Um, preserving major parts of that or, you know, major some parts of the major tree stands to me is, is what I'm trying to hope that people see that, you know, just all, you know, it, it seems like there's such a emphasis of no development 
um, everywhere versus development in the right areas versus, you know, having something out on the outskirts that flattens everything and takes away all the trees is a little bit different than the in-town development. So I just want to be careful about when we talk about saving these resources that, um, you know, people don't start pointing to areas of your general plan and say, see, see, it says here not to do this when you take the context of the overall project into consideration where, do you know what I'm saying? It seemed like people cherry picked that a lot and cherry picked the verbiage that they liked and said, see, you can't do this um, when they kind of lost the bigger picture of, well, where is this actually being located in your town? And is that land use appropriate and that density appropriate for your town and your town plan? I hope that makes sense. It does, but I, you know, as I've spoken with people a little bit more and, um, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, the conversations that were had during the village were always that productive, unfortunately. Um, I think it goes to something that Mark said that just really resonated in that we are, a lot of our townspeople, they may not necessarily be um, as opposed to density as they are to ugly. And I think for a lot of people that I spoke, it was designed that they, they, foresaw just, you know, clear cutting of trees and just, you know, plain concrete all over the place, as opposed to, you know, being able to have this, um, this faith that the development would be, you know, again, not a not nothing, but also then not the extreme of being just, you know, clear cut and concrete, but something in the middle of where you try to work within the, the natural environment as much as possible. So this sentence, Randy, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, Randy. I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, Randy, you have your hand raised? I do, thank you. Um, I agree with the previous comments. Um, the one suggestion I would have for line 11, adding to natural resources such as trees, streams, and rock outcroppings, I think might kind of wrap it up. And it's, it's the verbiage is extremely important at this point by saying such as, that means we're not being all inclusive. We're not, this is not just the end of the, the road, so to speak, on the discussion regarding you know, what we're careful about in this town, but that these are examples of that. And this is an ongoing conveyance from the town to any potential development that this is what you're going to have to try to accomplish. If, Romans has a particular interest in these things, and you need to stand by the implementation side of it. The other thing I would I would say would be I think we're doing a very good job here. We're really we're really talking about it, we're trying to do some consensus uh, that we all care about this town, and it's, I think it's conveyed enormously to. This document was brought forth 20 years ago, and now we're lucky enough to be part of this process. But I think we're doing a very good job. I'd like to compliment the committee for the discussion. So I'd like to turn our attention to this sentence here. And I have a couple of suggestions because I'd like to put some teeth into this. Because this talks a little bit about what we're talking about here, where development should pay attention. So rather than making this all wishy-washy, mamby pamby, what if instead, uh, rather than say may allow, what if it said may require development to be clustered in areas of the site in order I like that. That gives the town some teeth. Yes, it does. And it and it basically takes it out of the developer's purview and says the town may say, no, you're protecting these resources. And if you're going to develop, you will cluster and get away from it. Um, anyway, I, I was reading that as we were talking as the committee and trying to say, well, okay, how do we make sure this actually happens? And that would be something there. Um, 
I would go so far as to suggest that this either end up as a goal or an objective. I, I think we have goals about that, so I'd make that an objective, because an objective is more specific. So I would make an objective. What does the committee think of that and the word changes? I like it. And then I think given how few areas we have left to develop, I think that it should be a priority. That's my personal opinion. And I'm living in a community that I wish was clustered to preserve natural spaces and create trails. So I'm, I, I appreciate your um, suggestions. Mark, could you add the word out um, in line 11, rock outcroppings? Oh, sure. <laughs> Yes. I put croppings, and I guess I'd have there to refer to, to Gene, but Word doesn't like it. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to defer to Gene. If Gene says it's okay to pluralize it, I'm doing it. Is it one word? I don't think so. I don't no, think the, so. the S at the end, Gene. Oh, yeah, I, that worked. Oh. Yeah. I think rock Yay, croppings is one word. Okay. Gene beats the software every time. I love it. Okay. Not every time. <laughs> uh, with this. That's better. Okay. Cluster, we have develop cluster development isn't necessarily a popular thing here, which is, Bonnie, as you know, that's why your development is not because they, it was proposed for that and was uh, very heavily lobbied against. However, we did have one small one over on um, Saunders, which unfortunately um, the recession came and the people didn't get to build it, but in the right circumstances, and, and this does give the, the town some leverage on it. Yeah, I, I like the way that's grouped, and I think it gives the town a lot more leverage than we had previously. Okay. Uh, if everybody's okay with the wordsmithing there, we can get on to commercial. Mark, I hate to interrupt you. We are getting close to that eight o'clock hour. And I think one of the things that um, we may need to revisit is the glossary. And um, maybe if the committee is ready um, to make a motion to accept that glossary, or, or did we have one more? To I, up? I would say. I would suggest accept the glossary, but come back and revisit. Oh, and Beth, what was it they were revisiting again? I think the the site coverage, coverage, the site coverage. coverage. So, um, but I just want to make sure though that because we have not talked about that um, the yes. spreadsheet with the, the that has all of the the table. the table, and I want to make sure that that's not a part of it. And um, no, that'd be the glossary. See, okay. I think you could you could make a motion to accept the glossary, accept the two site coverage uh, discussions until such time as we review table three one. Yeah. yeah. It kind of just feels a little bit premature, though. A little bit. How does the committee feel? Are you guys ready to? Make a motion on the glossary, or do we need sure, to I, roll it up next week I or two weeks? That's a good idea. Randy, Randy, I didn't hear what I didn't hear what you said. Oh, sorry. Um, I can't rephrase exactly what it is you said, Andrew, but I would make a motion to go ahead and approve the glossary up to the point where we will defer what a, one or two items. Yeah, the, the items on site coverage. Okay, there we go. That's my motion. Okay, is there a second or any comments? And actually, do we have any public comment? We don't have any public comment. Um, committee members, any any comments? Any seconds? 
I can second Randy's motion. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Okay. Can you read person Jan Clark Kretz? Hold on, Beth, did you have a question? What's the motion? Um, the motion is to um, accept the glossary with respect to, with the exception of site coverage, because we need to go over that table still. So we're just, we're just approving the glossary with that exception. I, ha I have it worded as a motion to accept the final glossary definitions as updated by this committee, except the site coverage section table 3.1, which we will revisit at the next meeting. Actually, no, so site, I, it is a site coverage definitions. Site that, coverage definition. Right, and I don't put in the table 3.1, we'll, you know, we don't need to say that. Okay. But it would be a plural site definition. Right, there are, there are two definitions. Yeah. Site visit, site coverage definitions, which Correct. will be revisited at the next meeting. Correct. And I have a first by... Randy and a second by Bonnie on that, correct? Correct. Yeah. And then okay, we'll go with the roll call vote. Does that answer your question, Beth? Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, so uh Chairperson Jan Clark Kretz? Yes. Vice Chair Bonnie London? Yes. Uh Jean Wilson? Yes. Beth Cohen? Yes. And Randy Elder. Yeah. Thank you. All right, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so the next time we will be meeting is on the 20th, 20th. 20th at six o'clock. And we will be picking up right here where we left off. Actually, no, we, we made a commitment to the persons who asked for land use designation changes to go first. So okay. land use designations will go first. And then when we can get to this, this is where we'll start. Okay, everybody on the committee understand then that what's happening next time. All right. Um, if, it, if it please the chair, Jan, before you let everybody out for recess, uh, there, was, there was a spreadsheet that was sent out. Uh, we had several communities. We had been asked uh, by the committee to do some research. We did that. Um, please take a look at this. If there's another community you want us to add to this, Please let Mary Beth know and, and we'll get it done before the next meeting. Um, but this was, uh, we had been asked what other communities looked at for coverage. Um, and of course, obviously this pivots on the definition of coverage and whatnot, and we're gonna add that as well. But um, if you if you want additional information, let us know and we'll have time to pull it up. Was, was this in the same packet with uh, the information that we got or a different? It should be with what you got. It was all sent back before Christmas. Okay. Christy, it was sent, wasn't it? I believe so, Mary Beth. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, before Christmas is still kind of a blur, so. Um... Right. Well, let's make sure we send it. If, if, if it pleases you, uh, please make sure all the committee gets it because we did the research in response. I think Bonnie had asked us to do that. Um, so we, we had done that. So if there was... The issue was context. Uh, how do you ask somebody to change a number if you don't know what they're not doing? So um, and we went through and we were given several cities uh, to check. And we did that and then we added a couple of our own just to make it more than one or two. Okay, and so I can, yeah. it's in there. I can confirm it was in the package that was distributed. Mm -hmm. It's item three. And Gene, if there's an issue or you can't open it, let me know and I can make a PDF of it and send it to you. Okay, it, it probably is there and I just didn't get through everything. Yeah, it's in the back and it's um, unfortunately, you know, because it's a, from somewhat wide, it's on several pages. So. Yeah, so although it's a table in its entirety in the packet, it's several individual pages and a couple of blank pages in between. Oh. Is, there, is there a chance you could print out some for us to pick, pick them up at the hall? Yeah, what I can do is um, convert that and send it to you just as one single PDF document. 
to look at instead of the printed version. If you or can, if you if you want it as a printed big sheet, I can do that too. Yeah, as long as it's a, not too small, because sometimes the spreadsheets are so small, I, there's no way I can see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll scan it even as an 11 by 17. Um, so that way, when you're looking at it online, you know, you'll see it. Um, and then I'll print them out. If you want to stop by and pick one up, please do. All right, everybody, if that's it, anybody have any comments, any, anything else? And if not, we will adjourn at 8.06. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank, thank you. Everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Adios.